What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marina. In today's video, we're gonna talk about cylinder cubic footage or dive cylinder cubic footage and how much air you actually have in your cylinder at any given time. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is during a recent dive trip, I had a bunch of open water students with me and after each dive, we'd get out of the water, we'd break their gear down, I'd have them take their tanks up to the shop to get them filled and then of course they'd reassemble their gear and we'd go out for another checkout dive. Well, one of the students come up to me after class and he said, hey, why do you keep having us, you know, refill our tank? And of course, I explained the safety factor built into always having a full cylinder when you dive. Well, then he kind of called me out on it and he said, but hey, you're not refilling your cylinder. And so I sat down with him and I tried to explain to him how your cubic footage will change based off of however much PSI you have. And then... Uh, I went on to further explain that based off what your dive profile is, you may actually have enough air left in your cylinder to make a second dive. Now, whether you dive the rule of thirds or you take your tank to whatever given pressure you're taking it down to, there still may be enough air in your cylinder based off what your sack rate is to uh, make that second dive safely. Now, of course, with students, we want to encourage them to always have a full cylinder before making a dive. But I wanted to show him that a lot of times instructors will actually use the same cylinder over and over if you're doing a series of checkout dives, which is typically to 20 feet for about 20 minutes, we will use the same cylinders over and over and over. And this is a industry thing. It's kind of how instructors save money. We're not having to pay for that extra air fill whenever we pay for the students' air fills, if you will. So I want to show you some of the most common cylinders, at least some of the most common cylinders that are here in our area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you at their full working pressure, and I'm also going to show you at one-third the working pressure, which is typically what you want to end your dive with, with around that one-third. And I want to show you some easy easy math that you can do, but I'll show you some more exact math that you can do simply with a calculator to determine how much air is actually in your cylinder. So the cylinders that we're going to be working with today are of course a low pressure 50, which is a steel cylinder. It's very popular here in our area. Uh, aluminum 63, which is very popular for kids and women uh, who are just getting into diving. An aluminum 80, bar none, any, anywhere throughout the world, that's going to be the most popular cylinder. Got a low pressure 85 and a low pressure 95. A lot of our techies here in the area, they like those cylinders. Um, our high pressure steel 100s, that's one of my personal favorites. A low pressure 120, a high pressure 120, and then a high pressure 133. All three of them are, uh, are very popular with people, say, with low sack rates and they want to carry that extra air with them. Or, I'm sorry, high sack rates and they want to carry that extra air with them. And don't worry about it. Metric guys, I've got you covered too. This is a 7.8 liter cylinder, a 9 liter cylinder, 11.1, 13, a 15, a 12.9, 19, a 15.3, and a 17 liter. So you can kind of follow along as well if you like the metric system over the imperial system. Working pressure on each of these cylinders are as listed as follow. The low pressure, any low pressure cylinder is going to be around that 2400 mark. Now I, I debated putting a steel 72 up um, and I chose not to for a couple of reasons. One, I really wanted to put it up here. It's a 2250 cylinder as far as working pressure. However, they're not common nowadays. They were made in the 60s and 70s and now they're just not common. So I, I decided to only put the most popular cylinders, especially here in our area up here. But all the low pressure is going to be at 2400. The standards, which is your 63 and your 80, they're going to be at 3000 PSI. Um, and then, our, of course, our high pressures are at 3442 or 3442 PSI. And once again, for the metric crowd, I got you covered as well. Uh, low pressure is going to be 165 bar uh, working pressure. Uh, standards will be 206 bar. And then our high pressures will be 237 bar. So moving over to a one-third working pressure, this is uh, going to simulate that you actually made a dive, you dove the rule of thirds, that's where you use a third for the dive, use a third to get back from the dive, and then you have a third for an emergency there at the end. So the one-third working pressure is going to be our ending pressure here. Um, of course, all the low pressures will be 800. The uh, standards will be 1,000, and then the high pressures will be 1147 or 1,147 PSI. Once again, for the metric crowd, got you covered as well. The low pressures will be at 55 bar. The standards will be at 69 bar. And then, of course, the high pressures will be at 79 bar. 
Um, knowing how much cubic footage you have at the end of the dive is important. Let you know whether you can use that cylinder again or it's very important, let's say that it's a nitrox cylinder and maybe you're doing partial pressure blending. Knowing what's in that cylinder is very vital to making sure you get the right fill or the right mix. So moving over to cubic footage, a low pressure 50 at one third its working pressure has 16.66 cubic feet. Uh, aluminum 63 at one third its uh, working pressure is 21 cubic feet. And aluminum 80 at one third of course is 26.66 cubic feet. A low pressure 85 at one third its working pressure is 28.33 cubic feet. A low pressure 95 at one third its working pressure is 31.66 cubic feet. Uh, high pressure 100 at one third is of course a 33.32 cubic foot. A low pressure 120 is going to be a 40 cubic foot. A high pressure 120 at a third is going to be 39.98 cubic foot. And then of course a high pressure 133 um, is going to at one third working pressure will be 44.32. Now there's some easy math that you can do here which I'm going to show you but then I'm going to take it a one step further and show you the full breakdown of the equation of how you can do this. Now this is pretty simple because basically we're diving the rule of thirds and you simply divide by three. However, let's say that you may still be diving to rule of thirds, but you come up with a little bit more than a third or a little less than a third. You can still do the math and I'll show you how that works out. So basically the easiest way to do this, if you're diving the rule of thirds, is you take whatever you're working or whatever your cylinder size is, and of course I use it in cubic footage. I'm gonna take a low pressure 50 and all I gotta do is take 50 here on the calculator divide it by three, and of course it comes out to 16.66 cubic foot. So you can do that for every cylinder on here. For example, let's do the aluminum 80. So if I take 80, I divide it by three, and of course I'm gonna get 26.66 cubic foot. So that's the easiest way to do it if you're diving the rule of thirds. Well, even if you are diving the rule of thirds, let's say that you ended with a different pressure than what I have listed, which would be a 800, 1000, or 1147. Let's say that you ended with, say, 1700 in that aluminum 80. So the calculation that we want to do is you're going to take the cubic footage or the cubic footage of your cylinder, you're going to divide it by the working pressure of the cylinder, and then you're going to times it by the ending pressure. So what that would look like, let's say that I've got an 80 cubic foot cylinder. So I simply take 80, I'm going to divide it out by 3000 PSI, because that's the working pressure of the cylinder. And then if I ended with say 1700 PSI, I'm gonna simply times that by 1700 PSI, and it says I've still got 45.39 cubic foot in the cylinder. Now, just to verify that, I'm going to use what calculations we already have just to show you the, the entire process. So instead of taking this number and dividing it by three to get your uh, one-third cubic footage, let's take the whole entire um, algorithm or, or um, equation here and see what it comes out to. So let, let's do the 80 cubic foot since we just talked about it, the 45.39 cubic foot or whatnot was at 1700. Let's see if we do the entire equation if the 80 still comes out to the 26.66. So all you do is take 80 cubic feet, you're going to divide it by 3000 psi, which is the working pressure, and then we're going to times it by one-third that working pressure, which happens to be 1,000. So times 1,000 comes up to 26.7. Here we got 26.66, which of course that rounds up to the 26.7. So there's several different ways you can do it. If you're definitely going off the rule of thirds and you end with exactly a third, you simply take your cylinder size or your cubic foot of your cylinder and divide it by three, and that will tell you how much cubic foot. However, if you don't dive the rule of thirds, or even if you do and you don't end on that third, whether you end with more pressure or less pressure, all you've got to do is take your cubic footage, divide it by the working pressure, and times it by your ending pressure, and that will tell you exactly how much cubic feet you have at the end of your dive. Whether you're using it to partial pressure blend nitrox, or maybe you are using it to see if you have enough air to conduct another dive 
based off what your dive profile is. Like I said, a lot of times us instructors will do that. We may do a series of checkout dives with a set of students and then another series of checkout dives with another set of students and then another series. Based off however many students we have, uh, if I have two or three students, I may make two or three checkout dives with them on the same cylinder based off what my profile is. If I'm only going to 20 feet for roughly 20 minutes to, to satisfy the skill set or the standards of that checkout dive, then by all means I could take the steel 100 or even the aluminum 80 based off what my sack rate is and make that series of three dives on one cylinder. So guys, I hope you found this inter this video interesting. If you want to know more on SAC rate and RMV rate and, and how to calculate that, I'll have those videos down in the description below. You can simply click on that as well, and I explain how to calculate your SAC rate and RMV in those. So guys, I hope you found this in video interesting. If you liked it, simply smash that like button for me and do me another favor and definitely share it. If you got any questions, please put them down in the comment section below. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.